everyone, Reverend Dorr here from Faith Community Church. Welcome to our online midweek Bible study. Have you ever spoken to someone about something only to realize that they didn't hear a word that you said? Or perhaps someone has spoken to you, and before you know it, you realize you really didn't hear a word that they said. You know, with all the information competing for our attention, we are a generation that truly struggles with listening. Are we listening to one another? And even more importantly, are we listening to God and to the voice of his wisdom? This, beloved, is the focus of our study this week in the book of Proverbs, Learning to Listen. Now, the book of Proverbs places a high value on the art of listening. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 20 tells us, Listen to advice and accept instruction, that you may gain wisdom in the future. Beloved, listening to advice now and accepting instruction now pays off with dividends. You will gain wisdom in the future. Think about how true this really is. Think about advice that you might have received long ago from a trusted friend or family member, and that advice still speaks to you today. I remember in grammar school, a little old nun in the eighth grade once said, don't pick up the first cigarette and you'll never worry about the second. Oh, how I wish that I had listened to that advice. You see, by the time I was a junior in high school, I was smoking almost two packs a day. Now, a few years later, I met Pastor, and he's the one who led me to the Lord. Now, at the time, we were both smoking, and the Lord was convicting him to give it up. I was his girlfriend at the time. And one day he said to me, Dor, the Lord wants me to give up cigarettes. Now, if I have to give up cigarettes and you're my girlfriend, you're going to have to give them up too, right? And I said to him, okay, I'll give them up. I was very compliant. And I did. And let me tell you something, beloved. That was such victory. I was under such grace. Instantly, I threw that pack of cigarettes away and I never picked them up. And then I found out months later, that pastor was still struggling, but eventually he got that victory too. Now to make a long story short, remember those wise words that I heard in eighth grade by that little old nun? If you don't pick up the first cigarette, you'll never worry about the second. Well, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit used that little nun's words whenever I felt tempted to smoke whenever I felt tempted after I had been set free. I'd hear those words and I know in my heart, if I don't pick up this first cigarette, the devil will never put me back in that bondage again. And I didn't. That little nun planted a seed of advice in my heart and it spoke to me for years. And beloved, I haven't smoked a cigarette in 45 years. Now that's victory. And it was the result or a dividend of listening to sound advice. Listening to advice and accepting instruction will help you gain wisdom in the future. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 tells us, without counsel, plans fail but with many advisors, they succeed. Church, listening to advice and accepting instruction can only happen when we train ourselves to listen. You know, in the beginning of this series, we learned in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2, that we are to make our ears attentive to wisdom and incline or turn our hearts toward understanding. Church, know this. Wisdom is the ability to listen before you speak. 
Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13 says, If one gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame. You see, church, it's his foolishness and shame because he didn't take time to listen. He didn't take time to take in all the facts. Now, a sign that you have poor listening skills is when you're engaged in a conversation with someone and you find yourself drifting while they're talking to you, waiting for the opportunity to jump in and give your response. And as they're talking to, to you, instead of paying attention to what they are saying, you're focusing on what you're going to say next. Beloved, that's not a dialogue. That's a monologue. It's a sign that you're really not interested in what they have to say. Church, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us become better listeners. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. I wonder how much good advice we've all missed simply by not paying attention. We need to pray, as I said, and ask the Holy Spirit, Help us become better listeners. Help us not be self-deceived. Now, Proverbs has given a lot of warnings in this book about self-deception. You see, without the ability to listen to wisdom's voice, we will default to our own understanding or the wisdom of the world. Beloved, the word of God, hear me must be bigger inside of you than your preference. The word of God must be greater inside of you than your convenience. Now you might ask why? Well, because if the word of God is not bigger inside of you than your preference, guess what? You're going to automatically default to your preference. And if the word of God is not greater inside of you than your convenience, you're also going to default automatically to what's inside you, what's greater inside you, to your convenience. God's word, beloved, must be valued bigger and greater inside of us than our own desires, if we're going to choose to follow God's wisdom. Now listen, to hear the wisdom of God, we must first be truly born again. John chapter 8, verse 47, Jesus said, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you don't hear, it, the reason why you don't hear them is that you are not of God. Wisdom, beloved, begins with the knowledge of God and not simply an intellectual or head knowledge. It comes with having a heart knowledge, a knowledge or knowing on the inside of you that comes through an intimate relationship with Him. And that knowledge, beloved, must be continually fueled by hearing and obeying the voice of God's wisdom. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 27 tells us, cease to hear instruction and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Beloved, we need to continually hear wisdom's instruction or we're gonna stray from the words of knowledge. Why is that? Because the book of Proverbs warns us to lean not to our own understanding. You see, we need to continually and constantly be fueled with a wisdom that comes from outside of ourselves. Because our natural wisdom, beloved, is tainted with sin. We are by nature self-deceptive. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 warns us, our hearts are deceitfully 
are deceitful, rather, above all things, and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Well, beloved, the only one who can understand the conditions of our hearts and bring the cure is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need his wisdom each and every day to show us the way we need to go. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, he who has ears, let him hear. Beloved, we need to train our ears to listen and listen with the intent to obey. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33 says, But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. You know, training yourself to listen to wisdom's voice, who is Jesus, anchors our soul. You won't fear the future when you adhere to God's wisdom. There's a knowing, beloved, on the inside of you when you have this revelation that God has you and that God has your current situation and that God holds your future, amen? Church, when you have this knowing, you are at ease. You know on the inside of you that God has it under control. You don't live in dread of disaster when you have this peace. And this peace comes with knowing God is in control of my life. Church, I want you to know, getting to that place in your life, confidence that God is in control comes through consistency. Listening to God is developed through consistency. Wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 34 tells us, Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorways. You see, the one who listens, beloved, is the one whose ears are attentive to hear wisdom's voice when each and every day. The one who sits in God's courts, who watches and waits daily to hear from him. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus, who is the wisdom of God, tells us, my sheep Hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. They hear his voice, church, because they belong. And they follow him because they listen. James, the Lord's brother, in the epistle of James, chapter 1, verse 19, teaches us, let every person be quick to hear slow to speak, and slow to anger. Seems simple enough, right? But it is also quite challenging for many to live by. All too often, we find ourselves doing the very opposite, being slow to hear and quick to speak and quick to respond in anger. Make no mistake, beloved, listening to God's voice, listening to wisdom, learning how to do it isn't going to happen overnight. Listening is a skill and it requires discipline, effort, and being intentional. Church, if you want to be a better listener, you need to be intentional. When you're in a conversation with someone, Practice focusing on what they're really saying. Practice the discipline of being present in the moment. And then carry that same practice over whenever you pray. German Lutheran pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer 
who was executed for the faith, resisting the Nazi, the Nazi regime, warns that he who can no longer listen to his brother will soon be no longer listening to God either. He will be doing nothing but babble in the presence of God too. He goes on to say, this is the beginning of the death of the spiritual life. Anyone who thinks that his time is too valuable to spend keeping quiet will eventually have no time for God and his brother, but only for himself and for his own follies. Oh, how true is this? Church, be intentional to hear. Be intentional to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying, what He wants to say in the moment as you pray. Tune into His frequency as you go about your day. Remember the words recorded by the Apostle John in John chapter 10. In this passage, beloved, Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. And those who follow him are his sheep. And he tells us that his sheep hear his voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Amen? Beloved, I want to ask you something, and it's a challenging question. How good is your voice recognition of Jesus? Can you discern his voice over the voice of a stranger? Church, I want you to know something. Remember this. To the extent that you know his word, will be to the extent that you recognize his voice. Wisdom's voice will always, always agree with God's word. Know God's word, and you will know God's voice. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31. The ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. I read a really great quote by Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln said, better to remain silent and thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. <laughs> Is that great? No, as we learned last week, it is a wise man who restrains his tongue, but a fool blurts out everything he knows. Church Proverbs 15 verse 31 is telling us the ear that listens to correction will be among the wise, but a person who is so self-absorbed only listens to the sound of his own voice and he will be counted among the foolish. The Bible teaches us in a multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22 says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. You know, the Bible places great value on one's ability to listen before they speak. Proverbs chapter 17, verses 27 and 28 says, A man of knowledge restrains his words, and a man of understanding maintains a calm spirit. Even a fool is considered wise if he keeps silent and discerning when he holds his tongue. Think about that. Even a fool is considered wise if he keeps silent and is considered discerning when he holds his tongue. 
Beloved, at the root of the problem for someone unable to withhold their tongue is a lack of self-control. You know, I did a teaching several years ago on the fruit of self-control. And you know something I discovered then? The fruit of self-control isn't really having self-control. It's when self, beloved, is under God's control. It's when self is submitted to the Lord. You see, when you submit yourself to the Lord, then you can resist the devil and he will flee. Amen? It is the fruit of submission, or rather the fruit of that submission to the Lord is obedience. You see, when you live life under the control of the Holy Spirit, and not under the control of your flesh, God's will supersedes your will. When you live life under the control of the Holy Spirit and not under the control of your flesh, God's power is the power that fuels your discipline to withhold your tongue, that fuels your discipline to listen before you speak that fuels your discipline not to react in anger. You see, when you live life under the control of the Holy Spirit and not under the control of your flesh, you are open to wise counsel and correction. Church, listen before you speak and think before you respond. One author I read said, do you think it was a coincidence that God gave us two ears and only one mouth? Beloved, the visual lesson from our anatomy is this. Listen and listen again before you speak. Proverbs Chapter 25, verse 12 says, Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. What does this mean? A listening ear, beloved, will welcome the correction of the wise because they value it like ornaments of fine gold. Beloved, do you have a listening ear when you're being corrected? Or do you scoff and do you mock the one who's trying to help you? You see, the person who refuses to listen to correction thinks they're wise in their own eyes and they think they don't need anyone's help. Author Jonathan Aiken wrote this. Not only does the fool usually listen only to himself, And not only does the fool speak more than he listens, but when the fool finally decides to listen to someone else, he listens to another fool. In other words, beloved, fools beget fools. Fools listen to other fools. So we need to ask ourselves, Who are we surrounding ourselves with? Are we surrounding ourselves with people who just yes us? Are we surrounding ourselves with people who tell us what we want to hear? Rather than people, beloved, who tell us what we need to hear? Is there anyone in your life? Ask yourself this who has the freedom to lovingly critique you, to lovingly correct you? Or do the people who are around you feel like they have to constantly walk on eggshells, afraid of how you're going to react? Maybe you're hearing, but are you truly listening to their wise counsel? for you. Beloved, training ourselves to listen and listen correctly 
requires discipline. Training ourselves to respond and not to react takes restraint. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19 says, When words are many, sin is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. How true is that? How many times have you stood there trying to take your foot out of your mouth? Because you just kept going on and on and on and you didn't know when to quit. We've all been guilty of that. Now, I want you to know there's a simple solution to avoid falling into that sin. Three simple words. Shut your mouth. Amen? Now, all kidding aside, beloved, I want you to understand. I know there are some of you. You've tried and you've tried, but you just can't seem to get a handle on this. If that's you tonight, beloved, I want to encourage you. I want to tell you, seek godly counsel. You see, there could be an underlying reason why you're finding this so difficult. You may be needing healing or maybe even deliverance. The first step to your victory, beloved, is admit that you are struggling. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, and he will guide you where you need to go. He will lead you to wise counsel. Amen? Now, before we close, I want you to get a pad and a pen, and I want you to write down these scripture references. We're going to read a few Proverbs, and I want to encourage you to write them down because I really, really believe if you meditate on this word and you let these truths come into your heart, they will transform what you think and what you speak. And they will help transform how you listen. So let's dig into God's word. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors there is safety. Proverbs 24, verse 6. For by wise counsel, you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Mm. You know, I want to read that one again. Write it down. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6. For by wise counsel, you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors, there is victory. In other words, beloved, this is telling us through wise counsel, God can give you a battle plan, one that's going to assure you of victory over your current condition, over your current situation. Don't ever underestimate the power of God to move on your behalf. Amen. God wants to train you, beloved, to be a better listener to his voice and a better responder to both him and those he has placed around you. Never forget, in a multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God, beloved. Let's just take a moment to bow our heads in prayer and ask the Father to make these truths known to us deep in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you and submit our hearts to you. Almighty Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy that follows us and leads us each and every day, Lord God. 
Father, we don't take lightly this opportunity to freely open your book and receive the jewels of wisdom to speak to us, to guide us, to direct our path. Oh, Father, tonight, we want to just come to you and, and surrender our ears to you, surrender our hearts to you, so that our ears will become attentive to your voice. Lord, train us in the art of listening, listening to one another, but also, Father, being so diligent to listen to you. For you said, Lord Jesus, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Father God, we surrender all that we are and all that we have at your feet. And we ask you to make this word big on the inside of us. Make this word great on the inside of us that it will lead us in the way we need to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, church, this is good stuff. I don't know about you, but this summer, I am being transformed but from the inside out, hearing the voice of wisdom I hear his voice each and every day and I cry out for more and more of his wisdom to guide me and guide you in the way he wants us to go. Amen. Amen. Well, I can't believe it. It's almost the end of summer. We have another week or so to go in this lesson. So I want to encourage you, don't miss it. Don't miss next week. Come back next Wednesday night at 730. Don't forget, we have service every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And also we have our online services at 10 a.m. For those of you who are not able to attend in-person service at this time, we want to invite you, beloved, to be a part of a church family who will love on you and lead you to the one who gave it all for you. Amen? Amen. For those of you who've been given online, I want to thank you, Pastor Gary, myself, and all the elders here. Thank you for your generous support. Thank you for helping us continue to to provide the mission and, and, and live out the mission of Faith Community Church, not only to our community here in Staten Island, but literally reaching around the world. So we want to encourage you to continue to give. If you'd like to give tonight, we would so appreciate it. Please follow the link that we provide below, or you can text the word GIVE to the number we provide below, and you'll be connected to our online giving platform. God bless you, beloved. It's been my honor and pleasure to serve you this evening. And I want you to know I'm looking forward to next week. God bless you. Have a great week.